Hey, what's up? Welcome back. It's Elevated Trucking with Rob. Thanks for checking us out. Today I'm going to give a little video on how I strap a load that looks like this. We call it like a lumber, lumber load, something like that. But it's like a square, pretty much a square load. So I'm going to show you how I do my strap. This is actually a real... Like a, oh, it's about All right. <laughs> I'm harder than I want to work today. on my day off to do this video. Alright, so this is just pretty much a simple simple extension bow that I can use to put my S protectors on there. Alright, let's walk to the other side. I have, to have my boxes set up a certain way to where there's my pull on that side because this is the side that I, you know, need the pulls, need the pulls, all the pulls at. Um, it's like makes it more convenient when I'm unstrapping and I get to a site, I'm going to try to be quick and efficient. boxes were definitely convenient. Now usually when I'm when I'm strapping my load, I'm usually going while the forklift is going. So I usually have a system and I can't really show it inside the warehouse. So I'm gonna do it from outside. So pretty much when I strap this load you definitely need two in the rear and two in the front. actually get one in the middle since I'm only driving to Philly. If I was driving long distance, I'll put two on each all of them. I'm actually just setting it up right now. Always put a strap around the rear, give it some extra support. Got these nails in it, these screws in it, so that it actually stays on the back of the load. So it's actually gonna go like this. Some people do diamonds. The load's pretty light, so it, it pretty much stays. I actually throw my straps. It's kind of windy today. Now, some people actually throw it the other way. I'm going to go close it up. Some people strap it underneath so that way there's nothing over the, the bump rail. But I actually, I like it like this. I strap it, everybody has their own preference. I actually strap it like that. So again, roll it down, put a loop in it. It's actually a lot less pressure on your shoulder. Instead of throwing it like this, I'm actually using some leverage. start going fast how I usually do it. I usually when I'm getting ready for the load I have all these already wrapped out and sitting like 
I've set them up, so they're already ready. I'm going to put this strap in the middle, since it's only going to be one strap on that bundle. to put a twist in it. If you put a twist in it, your 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 straps won't, you know, like uh waver back and forth as much when you're driving. On the other side I really don't when I when I got a load like this. But at least this side. Because actually, I'm just now uh, just getting caught up in the throwing them. But I forgot my winch in the back. I actually have to throw it from the other side. So while I'm at it, since I made a mistake, I'm going to show you how I wind them up. This is a nice product from, I think it's Bumblebee. I'll try to leave a uh, description in the, in the comments below. In the description. So anyway, how I, how I wrap these up, you see how you got markings on this side. Your markings on this side, then your hook is this way. So I actually roll it this way. So when I'm actually throwing it like that, you see how it's all ready? So I usually have it, I set it up in the, in the bumblebee mechanism like this. So I wrap it like this. And I pull it around like that, but watch the magic. Get you a drill. Get that little extension. A bit. Makes the job a lot easier. See how quick that was? You just gotta be careful when it gets to the end. You don't want to hit yourself. Trust me, I hit my shins a couple times. Trial and error, and you learn from it. All right, so I'm going to throw the last strap from the other side. Right here is 
uh, it holds your edge protector. It's pretty, it's pretty neat, pretty sturdy, stays on there pretty good. So putting the strap up, I mean the edge protector up. I think this is on myt.com. Check them out. I always put the front one to an angle. So it keeps the load, you know, going that way. And then on the back, I can do it to this angle. take my time, make sure the load's secure, then the rush, and make a mistake. So I'm actually done with this bowl. I'm going to wrap, put this back in the box. This is how 
I secured the strap from the winch. You take it, you want to put it inside the bump rail. Push it through. Put it around like this. And you want to put your excess, roll it up. Because when you tighten it down, it's going to tighten the excess down. So you don't have to worry about the excess. Practice makes perfect. Excess in. Tighten the excess in. When you always try to keep your straps as straight as possible. It's actually when you drive you bouncing on the road if they're not straight they'll kind of move over and then it'll loosen up the strap on your load so definitely check your load I, I drive about an hour before I check it. and if you're driving real long check it a couple times I'll do another video one day on how I actually set it up when the forklift driver is low in me and how I have everything set up. So by the time he's done, all I really got to do is take my, my bar and tighten them down. I'm out of the next person's way. Time is money. I don't want to be in their way. Getting this ready for the strap that I'll usually put around the back of the load. And that's why I said I threw that when I made that mistake, my winch is actually on the other side. Because if it was on this side, I would block my light, my ABS light. Now I don't want to do that. So the winch is on this side. This last one in the back, I always kind of tuck it in, in there. So we know the back one and the front was actually the most important one. So I kind of tuck it. All right, that's how you do it. This is my strap that goes on the back of the load. Give me some extra support. Pull it under one. Go up. Okay. Make sure you pull it. Because if you get to the other end and it's like this and you start tightening it, then it's too much uh, strap that's on the, uh, the ratchet. So you want to tight, you know, pull it tight. Put it behind, behind your strap. I kind of try to keep it straight. Last one, I 
put on the outside of the strap. If I go on the inside of the strap and it tightens, it'll keep it out like this. So I actually go to the inside of the strap. If you want a more in-depth video on how to actually use the strap, the ratchets, just let me know, I'll make one. Tight right there, little tuck test. This bar is a nice bar too. It, it's actually curved for a reason. So you have leverage this way, and when you need to push it in to the ratchet this way, you have leverage if you need it a different angle. So now all I do is tighten it down. How do you know how tight it is, how tight you need to have it? When you, if you look up at, if you look up at the top, it's like a little bit of an indentation, but you don't want to go too tight to where you're damaging the load. But then definitely check your, check your straps in your first hour of driving. when I come in to do my pre-chip in the morning, I'll take my pull back out, I'll check the load, and I'll actually tighten it up just a little bit more. one in the back. double check so you know because you get caught up in the moment of strapping then you actually want to you know just go back through and as you're walking back to the driver's side to the truck just check them make sure they're tight tuning in elevated trucking with rob hope you like the video make sure you hit that like button subscribe button anything i can show you i learned something you're going to learn something you want to know something hit it in the comments below again thanks for checking me out elevated trucking talk to you soon peace out